My name is Tyson Raper. I'm the pedigree cotton specialist with the University of Tennessee. I'm going to be talking with you today about assessing cotton growth stage. I think it's most appropriate to start the discussion with a season overview. This can kind of give you an idea of the progression of these key growth stages as we move to that scenic, open, white cotton field we think about uh, that we typically would see at the uh, in the middle or end of October. At that point in time, we've seen all of the fruiting bodies on the plant open up, uh, and and that that would be beyond the the last growth stage I'm really going to talk about which is 60% uh, bowl opening. Now we target a plant date in Tennessee around May 1st. That's uh, not always achieved, but uh, it would be ideal. Typically seven to 10 days after that planting date, if we were able to get it out on May 1st, we would see uh, emergence of the cotyledons. And this growth stage we typically refer to as emergence. Over the next several weeks, we'll actually talk about growth stages in the number of true leaves that we see on the, on the plant. Uh, not long after that, really within the next uh, week, we stop talking about number of true leaves and we really talk about nodes. A lot of times you'll hear uh, someone talk about six or eight node, eight or 10 node cotton, but we don't really talk about 12 or 15 node cotton from a growth stage standpoint, because by that point in time, we have reproductive bodies on the plant. And we really gauge growth stages from this point on by uh, the number and, and uh, state of the fruiting bodies that are on the plant. Beginning about 40 days after planting, uh, we'll actually see the first square develop. And the next several weeks after that first square develops is referred to as the squaring stage. That would be the stage at which each plant would have typically a square on the plant, but we would not see any flowers. The first flower is typically found somewhere between 60 to 65 days after planting. And at that point in time, you'll hear some people refer to this as the flowering period. You'll also hear some people talk about the setting bowl period. And, and the reason for that would be uh, underneath that bloom tag after that flower has dried up, uh, we'll actually start to see that young bowl begin to, to form and become much, much larger. Uh, we do occasionally refer to that as, as the setting bowl period. But there are several other subsets in this flowering window that we often talk about. A lot of times we'll talk about peak bloom. That occurs usually three weeks after we see our first flower. Uh, that will be the point at which the plant has the most flowers it's going to have on it uh, during that growing season. Soon after peak bloom, we have cutout, and that would be the point in time at which the plant reproductive growth has basically overrun the vegetative growth, and we will reach note above white flower five at, at, at that, that time frame. That's our, our generally established cutout growth stage. Not long after uh, cut, cut out, we'll find our first cracked bowl. Uh, and if everything goes well within the next, uh, I'd say three or four weeks after that first cracked bowl, you'll have uh, bowl opening progress up the plant to where you're 60% open. And at that point in time, uh, defoliants and bowl openers will be applied. And, 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 and again, we'll reach that uh, scenic white open uh, cotton field that you think about when you think about uh, uh, Tennessee cotton production. What are these key growth stages that we typically talk about? Uh, from a research standpoint, it's a little bit different. Uh, uh, from, from a scientific standpoint, you'll typically talk about emergence, uh, the first week of squaring, followed by second, third, uh, possibly fourth week of squaring. Then you'll talk about, you know, first week of flower, second week of flower, third week of flower. Typically, not long after the third week of flower, we'll actually reach cutout. Uh, then we'll reach the first week of cracked bowl. Uh, and as those bowls continue to open, we'll eventually reach 60% open. One important point I want to make here, and, and uh, 
uh, I think this is important when you're assessing growth stage in the field. Uh, we are not, uh, if a field has one flower in it, for example, I would not uh, classify that, uh, that field as being at the first week of flower. We're really talking about stages where the entire field is very near or beyond the given growth stage. And, and generally the break point for me is 50%. So if we go out to a certain area in a field, I would look at 10 consecutive plants. If we're talking about first week of square, for example, uh, the date at which 50% of 10 consecutive plants have a match head square to me would be the, the that would be the first week of, of true squaring. Uh, and that's a great point to note in time because we do typically talk about first week of square, second week of square, third week of square, and, and the length of these periods can give us insight into uh, potential uh, of the, 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 the crop, uh, what, what the yield potential may be. We definitely want a long and uh, 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 environmentally favorable flowering period. If we only have uh, two or three weeks of flowering, it's it's definitely going to be a, a fairly tough year, uh, fair, fairly low yield potential. We, so it's, it's, it's very important to note uh, when that flowering uh, first occurs, and, and not just when there's one bloom in the field, but when about 50% of the plants within a given area uh, have reached that growth stage, uh, when we're trying to characterize uh, growth stage and ultimately uh, yield potential of the field. And we're going to spend a little more time on this slide uh, because again as I mentioned you know the first uh, few weeks of uh, the, the cotton growing season we do talk about vegetative growth but the majority of the season uh, growth stage uh, classification is going to be based on uh, bowl uh, fruiting body development uh, and, and, and ultimately bowl maturity uh, so so very very early on in the growing season uh, generally somewhere around the eighth to 10th node, we're going to see the first square. And initially that square is going to be what we call a pinhead square. It's a very, very small square. Uh, to find that pinhead square, you're typically going to look around the sixth or seventh node on the plant. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about uh, node nodes and, and first position fruit in, in a minute. But uh, we're going to look at that sixth or seventh node on the plant, and we're going to look for uh, these uh, bracts. Uh, within two or three days of pinhead square, we actually reach match head square. And match head square is much easier to identify. Again, we're going to still be looking in that sixth to seventh node uh, range on the plant, uh, but, but they are uh, larger. About 22 days after that first square is noted on the plant, uh, that square will have moved to be a white flower. Uh, you, occasionally you'll hear people uh, talk about candles. A candle would be just a few days prior, it would, we'd be right here. That's basically right before the petals have unfurled uh, and the flower has opened. Uh, the day after the flower opens, it'll actually turn pink. Uh, within a few days after that, it's going to dry up, turn into a bloom tag. And at that point, you will really be able to see that bowl uh, below that bloom tag begin to grow very rapidly. About 21 to 25 days after we uh, flower, we will actually have bowl the bowl reach uh, full size. It's, it's important to consider here that the fiber is still maturing though when we reach that full size uh, 20, uh, 21 to 25 days after flower. Uh, the fiber at this point will have completely uh, lengthened, but it will not have thickened. And in environmental conditions uh, around the availability of water and carbohydrates are very, very important for that fiber to continue to develop so we can achieve uh, not only adequate premium micronair uh, uh, and, and, and fiber maturity. From flower uh, all the way to cracked bowl is generally 49 to 50 days. 
Uh, and after we reach cracked bowl, uh, those bowl walls will uh, continue to dry down uh, and, and allow that uh, cotton uh, within the bowl to fluff out uh, where we can come through with a spindle picker and, and, and easily harvest. So each one of the fruiting positions on the plant, if we successfully protect those from insect pests, uh, and, and have a favorable environment will progress uh, this way. Uh, if we're trying to figure out first week of square or first week of flower or find the first cracked bowl, it's gonna be very important to understand how the plant develops and where to look uh, for these fruiting positions on the plant. Uh, now, many of you have, have seen this uh, many times before, but uh, when we think about a cotton plant and we're counting nodes, we're going to start at cotyledonary node, which uh, late in the season is just going to be uh, two scars, opposite sides of the plant, uh, very, very low on the plant. That's going to be cotyledonary node zero. From that point, we're going to uh, increase uh, by one. So the next node would be node one, uh, node two, uh, node three on this plant is a vegetative branch node four, node five, and actually node six on this plant is the first fruiting branch. This first fruiting branch is where we're going to try to look to find our first square. And, and since it will be the oldest fruiting position on the plant, that's also going to be where we would typically find our first flower, the first cracked bowl, uh, th this first position fruit low on the plant, uh, uh, is going to be the oldest uh, uh, fruiting position on, uh, on the plant. Fruit age then increases as we move up the plant and out the plant. Uh, I won't go into all those details uh, here, uh, but, but when we are trying to figure out, again, first square, first flower, cracked bowl, we're going to look low on the plant, typically target node uh, five, six, or seven, and look at that first position fruit uh, that is that, it, that remains on the plant. Now, typical uh, days after planting ranges uh, for growth stages. Th these are just very, very basic guidelines. There's a lot of different things that can influence uh, actual uh, day after planting uh, uh, to reach a given growth stage. Environment plays a huge factor. Cultivar plays a huge factor. I'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute. Uh, but typically, as I mentioned, seven to, day, seven to 10 days after planting, we're gonna see emergence. Uh, somewhere between 40 to 45 days after planting, we're gonna start the square stage and we'll remain in that squaring stage until we find that first flower. We'll typically find that first flower, hopefully by July the 4th, but uh, 60 to 65 days uh, after planting, will continue in that flowering stage, or you know, occasionally you'll hear, you'll hear it referred to as the setting bowl stage. Uh, uh, cutout typically occurs when we are five nodes above white flower. Uh, again, that's when that reproductive growth has really overrun the vegetative growth of the plant. Cracked bowl is going to occur somewhere between 105 to 120 days after planting. And uh, with a little luck, we'll find 60% uh, open bowl, somewhere between 120 to 140 days after planting. Again, I mentioned environment really dominates uh, uh, realized growth stages in the season. Uh, and you can see this is actually data collected from three site years uh, in Tennessee. Uh, most of the ranges are, are fairly narrow. You can see the colored lines here are actually uh, different cultivars of different differing maturity. Delta Pine 1612, the blue line, is a very early maturing variety. Delta Pine 1646 is a mid maturing variety. And Delta Pine 1851 is a late maturing variety. Uh, you can see as we move through each of these growth stages, the early reaches uh, that growth stage a little bit earlier than the mid, which reaches the growth stage a little bit earlier than the late. Uh, at the end of the season, we're talking about typically a seven day difference. Uh, so you can really, you know, by selecting an early maturing variety, you'll be able to get in 
and harvest a little bit earlier than you would be able to with with a late maturing variety. Uh, cultivar does play a large role in what we see from a growth stage standpoint, but but really, as I mentioned, environment's going to dominate, and you can really see that when we look at this cutout parameter again. Uh, cutout uh, would occur when reproductive growth really overruns vegetative growth. If the plant has been under stress or the environment is particularly stressful, uh, we can see that cutout come very, very early in the season, uh, within a few weeks of uh, that first flower. And if that occurs, uh, we can see uh, severe uh, yield penalties associated with it. But that's a, a very brief overview of how uh, the cotton uh, development progresses through the season, the critical growth stages uh, that we typically talk about uh, when we're trying to uh, characterize uh, cotton growth and development in the field. Thanks for your time. Please feel free to reach out uh, to me if you have any questions at all.